Today on Overdrive San Diego, Mark checks out the new 2014 Chevrolet Impala with special guest Richard James, the product communications manager from General Motors. Later, I sit down with Mark and my other favorite guy, Don Swanson, to discuss the latest events and cars. Afterwards, we take a trip down memory lane to talk about the car events we've attended and inform you of the new ones coming up this summer around San Diego. And later, I try on some racing gear as we get a closer look at Don's race car. Diego, driven by Frank Motors. I'm Amber Musker, Mark Maynard, and my very fave, the other man, Don Swanson from Don Swanson Performance Driving School. How are you? I am perfect. Every time I'm with you and Mark, it couldn't be any better. Couldn't be any better. Oh, nice. Talking cars. I know. Talking yeah, cars. That's right. Well, when was the last time we saw you? Just a few months ago, right? Yeah, you and I did some parking maneuvers and some oh, other the things, wounds as I are recall. All healed, even if they were just emotional. I wasn't that bad. <laughs> I, I mean, okay, so I, I hit a couple cars and I did hit a couple cones, but it's fine now. It's all, yeah, you know, fixable. Yeah, yeah, buffed out. We're ready to go. Yeah, it's not The cones bad. have been repaired. Yes, yes. Now your ego, on the other hand. Bruce forever. <laughs> I know. I tried to listen as good as I could. I you promise. did a good job. Well, the good thing is that there is no par parallel parking in this episode whatsoever. Thankfully. So you're safe. You're just going to sit here right next to me. You're going to be just fine. Okay. <laughs> he flinches. Look at this guy. All right. Let's go ahead yeah. and get to the car that you just recently drove, which was the 2014 Impala. Tenth generation of Chevrolet's new redesigned large sedan, front drive, three engine choices on this. And the styling is generations better than the last right. styling. You know, the last generation car was sort of the, the fleet car. Even government agencies mm -hmm. need that dutiful company sedan yes. to get around in. Now they can go back to the Impala and get a car with style and all of the latest technologies and driving aids to keep people from doing stupid things. Yeah, hopefully. I like how you look at me, right, when you said that. I was talking to Don. Uh-huh, uh-huh, you too. I don't, I don't you know. need to be ganged up on today, all right? This can't go on. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the 2014 Impala. We're on Shelter Island today for a test drive of the 2014 Chevrolet Impala. And so I don't have to do all the hard work. We have Richard James with us down from Thousand Oaks, General Motors Western Region Headquarters. And Richard knows everything about every car at General Motors. Uh, we'll try to help you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so all the tough stuff he can handle. But basically, 2014 Impala, all new, completely redesigned, a gorgeous design on the car, the exterior, and every kind of human comfort and convenience feature possible on this, the top of the line LTZ model. Top of the line LTZ with options. It's nearly forty thousand dollars, and it includes a three hundred five horsepower V six direct injection three point six liter. You can also get this with the two point four liter four cylinder. Correct. What's the that's horsepower? The uh, the two point four is the Eco model, so that's the one with E assist. And oh then you yeah. You have the two point five naturally aspirated. Yes. Right. I drove the Impala with a 2.5, and that was surprisingly responsive yeah. for a four-cylinder. Yeah, yeah. So if somebody doesn't need, you know, hill climbing power, if they're not commuting with the carload of people, the four-cylinder is, is quite adequate for if it's just you and your wife gonna buy the car. Yeah, I mean, if you're not, as you said, if you're not, you know, 
carrying you know a load yeah. um, and you're looking for a little bit more fuel efficiency than the four cylinder um, you know really is a good package um, you know that the fuel efficiency on this 36 is still really really good I mean I think there's only you know like a one or two mile per gallon difference between the 2.5 and the 3.6 yeah. though you know the EPA ratings for the V6 19 miles per gallon city 25 mm -hmm. highway 29 29 highway, highway yes on regular yep. fuel I, I'm getting in my commute back and forth the last couple of days it was 25.6 Seven, eight. I'm doing well. I, we just launched there. I'm down to twenty four point two. That's combined. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the the internal combustion engine and the things that we've been able to do over the last number of years. You know, whether it's direct injection or variable valve timing. You know, if you're just you know cruising along at you know eighteen hundred RPM, I mean, you're you're absolutely going to get that twenty nine yeah. thirty miles per gallon on the freeway quite easily. Yeah, yeah the EPA says combined is twenty two. So at 25, I'm doing way better than that. And yeah. that's, that's unusual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, also kind of special about the design on this, the whole body design, it's a, it's a much more attractive car now, but it was also for aerodynamics. And this has got an, a coefficient of drag of about 0 0.296. Yeah, which is, you know, that's pretty low. In the old days, that's like, you know, sports car territory. One of the things that the American brands do so well to reach American motorist is interior design. We've always liked kind of some flash and style yeah. to interior yeah. design, and I like this dual cockpit layout and the stitching. You know, this is this is the top of the line stuff. You've got the good leather, the nice stitching, and even in the seats, you know, the yeah, light the blue stitching, stitching that goes with this. That's gray. a nice touch. Yeah, it's a, it's a little extra, and then you've got the blue lighting, the ambient lighting that's piped in all through the car. Yeah, and you know what what you're seeing here, and you know, frankly, you know, we know that that. Uh, not that long ago, you know, we didn't pay as much attention to interiors as we should have. Um, now, you know, a great focus, a lot of resources being spent on interiors of our cars because that's where we all spend our time. You, um, you know, we, we have great powertrains, you know, we did great exterior styling, we did good interiors, but they weren't great. This is sort of the, the, the foundation, if you will, of, of Chevrolet, this, this, uh, this two seat cockpit yeah. console area. You know, when you look at the new Corvette, for example, you'll see this very similar cockpit type styling in the Corvette. This is this is the interior that you'd, you'll see in all of our um, Chevrolets, yeah. one to one degree or another. But this is this is pretty much you know the type of thing that our customers are growing to expect from Chevrolet. Well, you know, all of this, you know, the fit, the finish, the touch, the steering wheel on this, a heated steering wheel. Yeah, it's nice. You know, until you've had a heated steering wheel, I don't know what the option is. It probably comes in a package. But if somebody says, you can get a heated steering wheel for $100, would you get it? I'm not going to spend $100 on, right. until you've tried a heated steering wheel. <laughs> Another feature that I just totally love is the electric parking brake. Mm. I mean, it clears Simple. up foot space or uh, it's just... A nice feature. Yeah, and, and that's another one that you know you're starting to see sort of go across the board as as we get into the next generation of vehicles. Um, you know, like you know, electric power steering or like yeah. power windows. I mean, these are the kinds of technologies that all started off in you know the premium brands, but but you know, with certainly here in the Impala, you're starting to see technologies transfer into other vehicles that are in a more affordable price point. Hmm. Is that because it saves weight? Electric parking? Uh, it's, a, it, it's a combination, I think, of, of many factors. I mean, you know, when I look back at, you know, the days when I worked in manufacturing, you know, there, there's weight savings, but there's also efficiencies, you know, in the assembly plant and manufacturing process that going to electric components, you know, with all the technology that's available today have allowed us to do. So there's weight efficiency, there's cost efficiencies, and there's efficiencies in the manufacturing. And then, obviously, the ultimate being for the customer, the convenience yeah. of as you said, a little bit more leg room, the convenience of just being able to, you know, take it out of park and the, the, the system itself identifies when you want to have the brake on or off. Yep. When I get into a, a car that's a so-called entry luxury and it doesn't have an electric parking brake, I just start go, looking. there's a point, take that off. Right. <laughs> well, it's just so silly. Right. If you can get it on a Chevy. Right. If you can get it on the Chevy, then you anticipate but, that you'd get it on a $50,000 whatever that is. Yeah. No, it feels tight. I like that there's a 
good simplicity to the gauge package for the driver to look at. Mm -hmm. Big tack on the left, big speedo on the right, and you've got, it's lighted, yes. and it's colored lighting, so it's engaging, it's intriguing yeah. to look at. And even the console, you know, setup is different. It's simple now. Simple, yeah, you're you seeing know, less buttons. Fewer, fewer buttons, because now you can also use the voice recognition. So I know, what are, the, what are some of the features that you can ask the lady for? Oh, there's, there's so many things that you can do because it's natural voice as well. Oh. So whether it's, um, uh, you know, directions, um, certainly having, you know, OnStar and using the OnStar system to mm -hmm. get turn by turn directions or just, you know, if you've got the vehicle that's got the, the standard nav system that comes in some of the packages, instead of you stopping the car, to type in the directions, yeah, yeah. you can just use you know the voice command system for them to do that. Um, changing the station um, on your XM right. satellite Let's radio, which you have you know in your vehicle. Say help. XM channel sixty-five. Tuning to sixty-five XM. Love it. When you've got your um, phone paired to the car, you know, you can just say, you know, call home or, you know, call my wife as long as you've got, you know, your partner set yeah. up in there, whatever it is, call your favorites. You know, the, the real focus is keep your eyes on the road, your hands on the wheel, and then you can use your voice to stay safe and get the kind of utility that you're looking for from the mileage. You know, for me, it's just the lazy male. I don't want to. I can just have the lady do it. Push the button. <laughs> but but attend to my you needs. Know, wh whether it's lazy mail or or whatever your choice is, we would rather have people have that kind of functionality than than pretending or trying to you know type something or use their phone to select the Pandora station or whatever yeah. it is. For us, ultimately, it, it it comes down to safety as well. Mark, you always make driving in any car looks so good. It's, it's just hands on the wheel skill. But it's easy to do in a car like that new Impala. You know, for me, it's a, the suspension was a little soft because we were driving a high end. You want that kind of a sports sedan. Right. It looked like a sports sedan. I want it to be more like that. Now, is it a car f for American motorists today? And I, I, have a, I wonder, if America isn't finished with that large sedan on the mainstream mm -hmm. level. Right. Yes, luxury sedans, Mercedes S-Class, BMW 7 Series, that's the statement of pride and prestige. You gotta always have those. But when America was driving the Impala in the 60s and Dinah Shore was mm -hmm. singing about it, those were the cars to have. Big, balmy cruisers, six passenger seating, comfort, roll down the windows. Today it's different. But just, yeah, not the case so much. We tra so. America transitioned from the big sedan. We went through that horrible phase of downsizing in those yeah. early 70s mm -hmm. and those dumpy cars. Well, how'd you like the look of it? Because at least the look that I was getting, it was a, uh, it looked like an upgrade from what they've been doing. Oh, I feel like they are really up. trying to turn around. Definitely I mean, an upgrade. Yes. Definitely inside. Now, I, think I mean, the valet mode. I mean, there was just certain things I feel like, wow, that's different all for a of Chevy. The, you know, collision mitigate, mitigation, collision mitigation, breaking, all of those technologies on a mainstream right. sedan. And which is brand new for Chevy. That's, those are a lot of firsts for Chevrolet. And, you know, as those are moving down market in this mainstream sedan, yeah, the styling, I think from certain angles, it's a gorgeous car. Uh, is it better than the previous generation? Oh man, yeah. And the paint colors, right. there's gorgeous blues, reds on that. Just, you know, we're, we're coming out of that old recession darkness of browns and grays. <laughs> and six so not fun. Silvers. So, yeah, all of the ingredients are there right. for this car to be a big success. Very nice. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens, right? Yeah. All right, stay with us. We've got so much more coming up, including all of the hot headlines, everything that's going on in the auto industry. So stay with us. You're watching Overdrive San Diego. Welcome back. You're watching Overdrive San Diego, driven by Frank Motors. I'm Amber Musker. I'm with the boys, Mark Maynard and Don Swanson. Glad Are you boys yeah. ready for some hot headlines? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you laugh. You laugh. They're hot. They're hot off the press. We're ready. ready. We're ready. I'm, I'm ready. 
Okay, insurance.com just came out with a couple stats on <laughs> worst backseat back seat drivers. Now, you guys know who those people are, right? Oh, t all too well. <laughs> it's... <laughs> I knew you were going to do that, and you're absolutely right. I'm a terrible, I'm not only just a terrible yeah. driver, I'm a terrible backseat driver, I'm a, yeah, I'm a terrible pedestrian, I never pay attention, I'm one of those people, yes. Well, then they should just stay off the sidewalk if they want to stay out of your way. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's, this is a fun, insurance.com does a lot of fun yes. surveys, and this is about the worst backseat drivers, and, and of that they say spouses are the worst backseat Very drivers. true, actually. Would you guys like to know what women said were the worst backseat drivers? Now think about it. Who are women taking um, back and forth? Kids, Ooh. right? Yeah. Spouses? All right. So let's take a look at this. The first one, among women, 34% of them said pointed to their husbands as the worst oh. passengers, followed yeah. by their mothers. <laughs> and then, oh, yes, true. exactly. And then followed by their friends. Now what do you think husbands would say? As a first? Yes. Uh, Sp well, wife, I guess. Okay, yes, wives. Um, children. Friends. They said their friends really? were the second next to their wives. Yeah. And then last but not least, their mothers. We're, mothers are just a lot of people like have their mother-in-laws like in the they, they must. Usually mother-in-laws keep their mouth shut. I guess so, right? <laughs> Surprisingly, children, um, you know, young, even to teens and um, young adults, they were the least irritating passengers. Well, Who would have thought? They're afraid to speak up to the authority figure. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, what? Oh, they're watching the video screen. They're not even paying attention. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they have their own, you know, movies I, it's, back there. It's, I, I just grab the arm door side and I just try not to say anything. But then I found myself, you can hear me. You know, I'm dry. It's like, <laughs> is that what you do? It's like, well, we're just a little, a little close here. Yeah. I try not to say anything because if you say the slightest thing, then it becomes you're always complaining about right. it. Right. So I don't say anything. Very true. Yeah. Well, oh, uh, would you guys also like to see or hear some of the worst passenger behaviors that sure. are there? I mean, what are, what are some of your worst? Like, I can already think like um, my boyfriend constantly plays with the radio, and it that really bothers me. And then I have girlfriends who talk on their phone and kind of gesture all the time everywhere put on their makeup, do that stuff. I don't know why, I'm distracted very easily. But those I think are just you're right. You're probably doing the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> no, I am. Okay, well, hey, I don't have that, a lot of time, I have to put my makeup on. Passengers that play with the radio, find a channel, crank it up, and then try to have a conversation with you when you're yeah. screaming back sure. and forth. It's like, well, if you want to talk, why don't we turn this off? You know, my, I, my, my biggest pet peeve is people who want to have the window down. With the when AC, you're yeah. driving at speed and it's the buffeting, it's like breaking my yeah. eardrums. Yes. And it's well, like, you really have to fresh air at 65 miles an hour. Very true. Well, that happens to be one of them, actually, that so they what say I do is, is, I is lower, one of the most irritating. I lower irritating. window so the wind blows through and gets some messes their hair well, look at you. It's passive-aggressive, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Some Skilled. of them were, um, they don't like when people make faces and gestures, screams about something I, that you're already aware of, uh, someone who tells you to go faster, someone who blocks the rearview mirror, gets car sick. Who's throwing up? <laughs> Who's doing that? Who carries bags uh, in their cars yeah, anymore? Exactly. Of course, gives commentary commentary on uh, the radio and tells me, of course, to turn after it's uh, too late to get over. So these are just a couple of things. Worst passenger wow. behavior. So learn from these guys. Insurance.com. You can go yes. there to get any of your insurance questions answered. Very nice. All right, so let's talk about something I know you both are very very excited about, which is the Coronado Speed, Absolutely. Speed Festival. Absolutely. I know you are especially, the need for speed for you. Yeah, and this year I'm really, really hoping to have my old race car back. One that I raced years ago at Long Beach and at Del Mar. I found it, it's in a, a museum in Atlanta. And I oh, really- Oh, it's like finding a long lost child. Absolutely. Right. A Absolutely. museum in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And ended up there. It I sold it to somebody and then it was sold to someone else and then wow. it ended up in this guy's collection. Well, at least you know it's being taken care of, right? Absolutely, I it mean, looks great. I that's gonna be a good feeling. Yeah, it's, a, it's one of my old Mazdas right. that I, it was a factory Mazda race car. So well, I'm hoping to get it back so I can run it in the event. Look you at know, you. know, what's really cool about Coronado is that despite the ravages of sequestration, mm -hmm. Speed Festival continues, yes. it goes on. It right. is on the dock at the calendar at the Pentagon. Right. It is so well received by the military for what it does for troop support, mm -hmm. support the the, uh, the morale welfare mm -hmm. recreation fund. So it also, this year, 
September 21, 22, will be the 16th running of the Coronado Speed Festival, and we will be there. Yes, we will. We'll have Overdrive San Diego, we'll have Maynard's Garage at the Speed Festival. Very nice. And it's just cool. Now, also coming back this year is the Playboy Miles MX-5 Cup Series. Don't get too excited, Don. Uh, I'm trying not well, to. Well, that totally ties in with Don. Yeah. And then our friend Elliot Skier, who has yeah. been on the show yeah. with us, lives yep. in Carlsbad, racing Mazda with racing. Mazda Racing now, knows Don well. Yeah, we've been talking. Yeah. It's, and. And then with the Mazda Playboy Cup Series comes a couple playmates to represent well, of course. the series. And we well, had of course. Pilar and that's Lastra where Mark will be. last year. No, we're old friends. It's nothing. <laughs> Just friends. I know you're trying to make me jealous We're right going to make them temporary crew members. They yes. Can, they can, you know, change tires. They can yeah. clean windows. Right. Oh, man. Right. They can take Pilar, care of me. Pilar's I mean, right. I mean, you know, right. help me. Right. Help me. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. You bring up a great point, though, with uh, just the sequester and, and how, you know, thank God it's still being funded and we're good to go. And, yeah. yes, it will happen in September. Right. However, I was a little surprised that tickets are $35 a person. You can do the VIP for, like, 150 but this is not, like, a, a cheap event well, if that you, you can right, go to. Well, $35. You're going to go to a movie. How much is a movie ticket? Ten bucks. Ten bucks. How much is so? But you're you're there for a few hours. Right. Speed festival. You. This is 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 a festival. The car yeah. corral goes across acres, acres, acres of runway out there. You'll have every car club in the region True. represented. That's True. nearly a hundred car clubs. There will be a thousand cars a day parked out there to wander through. You will have military displays, airplanes, helicopters. Very you can nice. talk to those guys. You will have ship tours. You can take the free trolley over, walk the ship tour, and then the racing. Vendor Village, you know, all this, in the, in the walking, the garage area, mm -hmm. they'll do tours twice a day, sometimes once a day. Get on those tours, you will learn so much history. Because the guys giving the tours are also racing. Sure. And they know all these guys. In, in that garage area, you'll have a million dollar birdcage Maserati and a $15,000 Triumph Spitfire. And those drivers are all the same. At that point, it's just enthusiasts talking about that's their passion. Right. And that's so you go $35, free parking. Okay, I'll take it. And remember, a movie's like, two hours. Saying. The Speed Fest, if you get there in the morning, you're there till the afternoon. So it's now, probably is the eight VIP, hours. Is the VIP worth um, that, Mark? Hun, the VIP is a that's a lot. The VIP is $150. Right. You get closer parking. Okay. You get, uh, there's breakfast. There's lunch. Okay. There's afternoon snacks. There's mid-morning snacks. There's okay. covered seating. Yeah. Okay. Special seating areas, too. But the best part. Yes are the bathrooms. Those are those executive, nice prestige <laughs> bathrooms. Air conditioned. Sometimes it can be really hot. It at can be. Yeah. So you go, you go into that bathroom. So it's like, oh, porta potty or clean water. Right. Oh, put You've a window. I want to cut a window right here. I'll just stand and get a great view of the track. So $150 a lot of money. Just get it's that worth air it. conditioned bathroom. Hun, you be back. You'll trust me. <laughs> I don't know. I want okay. an ice cream sandwich and I'll be in the bathroom. <laughs> Look at you all. If we don't find Mark, we know where he's either with the playmates or he's in the bathroom. I never have Good time. To know. I always bring cars to the speed festival. <laughs> sure. So it's a great time to wave the flag for UT San Diego. Okay. Meet people. I love it. You know, we've got, got the Mainers Garage banner. We get racers. And Don, you have to sign my banner. All right. I'd love to. We've got Christy. In honor. Christy Edelbrock, Boris said. Uh, all our old else? friends who have ever been on this show are going to be there. And they will be. Christy Ellenbrock will be back. She It'll always, he, she and her dad, Vic, always race there. Yep. And it's just, uh, it's it's incredible. Yep. And it's a military fundraiser. Exactly. So it's all good. Well, yeah. Mark, you mentioned it's coming back, to, you said 16th? This mm -hmm. will be the 16th, 16th run. But there is a, an impact, you know, economically for the region when they have this race. Like when they had Del Mar, it brought like $20 million oh, yeah. dollars worth of revenue to that area in three days. So, I mean, it's a big deal. It's not sure. just, you know, oh, these, these people are taking up space for a weekend. I mean, there's a, it brings a lot of people here. Well, this race is well-liked by the racing families. It's not yeah. Laguna Seca. It's not Lime Rock. Mm -hmm. It's a flat runway just like Sebring. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's San Diego and right across the Coronado Bridge, families can go shopping. They can go to the well, zoo. Well, it's a great, wild yeah, a great town. It's, I mean. Yeah. 
So you send if you, if your spouse isn't into racing, they get to go out and enjoy themselves, spend the a little there, money, and then they have a blast. They all get back for dinner that evening and have a good time. And right. like Delmar, those aerial shots from the helicopter. Right on the coast. Yep. Yeah. Sells really oh, well gorgeous. to an, a TV audience. You know, yes. you'll, you'll look at, at one point to be a massive transport sh plane yes. cruising down for a yeah. takeoff. And then you look the other way, and there's a cruise ship going up. Mm -hmm. It's only in San Diego. I know, yeah. only so in San Diego. Yeah. All right, you've convinced me I'm going. You know I'm you're going to be I'm there. getting the VIP Over pass. Overdrive San Diego. Your ass <laughs> <I am. laughs> All right, boys, let's talk a little bit about the Corvette, shall we? Oh, that was totally fun. They just announced. We, we've heard so much about the 2014 Corvette. Little dribs and drabs, little pictures. Well, everything's out. It goes on sale in September. Um, you know, they just announced the horsepower. It's scary. Oh, f scary how fast it is. That's what you're talking about, right? Oh, scary good. It's of scary course. good. The, you know, the garden variety Corvette base model, 455 horsepower. You get the little, they've got a power package, brings it up to 460 horsepower. How fast does it go? 60, I mean. We haven't done that kind of testing. Chevrolet is saying less than four seconds. Okay. And you go, for 460 horsepower in our Corvette, you better believe it'll do yeah. it. You better awesome. do yeah, that. Yeah, it's gonna, it'll be yeah. doing well less than that. So this goes on sale in September. So the pricing starts at just about $52,000. You can run it all the way up to like seventy three thousand. That you get the full leather interior. Mm -hmm. You get the Beautiful. brake. You better get yeah. something for twenty thousand dollars more. Oh yeah, yeah. You, and I, I, you know, a garden variety convertible Corvette is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Balmy summer cruise. But if you really want to enjoy it, load it up and have fun. With it. <laughs> sure, That's, sure. And you said it starts at starts about fifty two thousand dollars a convertible. Okay. Uh, they both 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 models go on sale. The convertible is almost fifty-seven thousand dollars, but if you like convertibles, the Corvette has always been a good convertible. You're talking about a rag top or it's a soft top. Hard top? No, it's a soft top. Okay, soft it's a good top. insulated soft top. Right. We nice. don't like the styling on those hard. Yeah, no, they're ugly. No. They're ugly. No. Yeah. Man, but this is good. this car. It has gotten so much. Uh, criticism and so much love. It's it's a volatile conversation it's point. It's a love Corvette. hate that people have. And it's Corvette. like, look at the styling. It's it's awful. Look at the styling. Right. God, it's killer. As I don't <laughs> yeah. love that. I can't it's say that. Been that way. Oh, they could have done so much more with it. It could have been this. Well, but what it is, it's pretty dang neat. You yeah. know. Yeah. So it's. God, I can't wait for the, the vet. media drive on that car because be you're going to get so many opinions coming out of it. You that. will. Very true. Yeah. All right. Stay with us, we've got so much more coming up here on Overdrive San Diego. Welcome back, you're watching Overdrive San Diego. I'm Amber Musker, Mark Maynard, co-driver, Don Swanson. I've been having a very, very good time with you boys so far. That's what we live for. I know, what we make an Amber live for. happy. That's happy right, boys. Amber. It's not happy easy. <laughs> it's not an easy job. All right, guys, let's talk a little bit about what's coming up, car stuff. I know that you constantly update this for everybody. It's the summer cruise season, and there's something going on just about every night. And especially if you look at the first Saturday of the month, there are all the car clubs tend to do something on the first Saturday of the month. Yeah. But coming up every Wednesday through the summer, through late September, the El Cajon Cruise. That is the nicest cruise because it's Why easy to park. Well, okay. downtown El Cajon, and you may not believe this if you haven't seen it, is wonderful. It's been completely redone, redecorated. Wait, we're talking about the same broad, city, right? Broad plaza. <laughs> Sidewalk dining, excellent restaurants, Nicolosi's, okay. Italian, the downtown cafe, Mexican. It's fabulous. It's a big boulevard. Guys park their cars along there. A few nights of the uh, of the season, they'll close off the street. It's even better, because there will be, you know, a couple hundred cars or more there, 400, 500 sometimes. That is a really nice cruise on a warm summer evening. Wednesday night to Cajon, Thursday, the La Mesa back to the 50s cruise yep. is starting. That one can be to 300 cars and more too. Friday night, Escondido cruise, that's a huge one with theme nights. Big, big presentation there. Okay. Also, 
cruise in the lakes at Santee Lakes. That is such a cool location. The lakes there, Sounds the pretty. ducks, the picnicking, all of that fun stuff. So those are, you know, through the week, th every third Thursday, Encinitas Highway 101. Yeah, Encinitas and, 101, I mean, what a better place for a you, car show. Do you play there? Yeah, See? I'll play my band, the Retro Rockets, we yeah. play every time they have an event. Yeah. I love the Retro Rockets. I am now oh. considered a groupie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've seen you play multiple times now. Very good. Thank you. Amber. Very good. Thanks. We have a lot of fun. And uh, it's, it's fun to play car shows. Everybody's in a yeah. good mood. Everybody's walking around drinking yeah. their lattes. Well, and, and you actually have a love for cars. So Love you know? cars. So it's real easy yeah. to do. Yeah. It's easy, yeah. Did it's easy people to in your around. band like cars too? Or? Yeah. In fact, uh, Jerry, my bass player, has a 56 Rambler. <laughs> Believe it or not, <laughs> we should get rid of that thing. But it's <laughs> no, like a it's bathtub. charming. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it's, we're all into cars. Um, I think Mike, my drummer, is probably the one that's maybe not as into it, but um, everybody else loves it. Yeah. Nice. No, I, I was just out at the Barona Drags, right? BaronaDrags.com. The Crower Car Show was awesome. That is a day long festival of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, in every week, in the RPM section on Fridays, yes. the wheels section on Saturdays, and then on Sunday we run Check calendar listing. Because Mark will keep you updated on anything as and everything going can. on in San Diego. Yes. I mean, you just covered Santee, Encinitas, El Cajon, everything. Something is there for you. Now, I want to go back to uh, one of my personal favorite uh, events that we went to, which was the good guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he laughs, but that's just simply because he was with it me was all day long. Time. It was a good time. All right. Mark, coming up. License plates. License plates. plates. What's the obsession with license plates? 50 states of love. Oh, it's kind of cool. Look at this. You know, where wow. did you come from? You find your roots with license plates. This reminds me that in California, the California DMV, has just allowed, you can buy vintage California plates. They're remanufacturing plates really? from the 50s, 60s, and what, 70s or 80s. You can get the old yellow background, black right, type. Right. You can get the black plate with the yellow. Love it. And then you can get the blue background with the yellow. Look at all There's of these. There's a catch though. You can pre-order your plates now. The set is $50. You can personalize your plate, but you have to wait until about 2015 to get the plate. The deal is, is that the DMV has to get 7,500 orders before they can initiate oh manufacturing. Oh my gosh. But it's only really cool. Is that possible? I mean, do you think they're, they're gonna be able They've to do that? They've got about 2,500 orders now. So it's, and it's only it's been going. Up there. Yeah, it's been going yeah. for a few months. Okay. So if they can get that number, right. then you can, you've got your 66 Mustang, you can get the black plate. If you've got Love your it. 50s, whatever, you can get your yellow plate, and they right. like that kind of stuff. And you can personalize right. it, too. Do you have a personal plate that you love, that you want, that you would want to get? I've got a couple on my cars. God. Look at you. You look a hoarder of very... I, I support the DMV with two How could you? I hate plates. the DMV, personally, but here you are supporting them. Yeah, good well, for you. you know, I, I want to support You're a good that. man. All right. Oh, oh, oh. Check it out. I always know when Mark some, likes something. A little he grunts. He grunts. Oh, yeah. It's like what is this? You want to take it home and hug it and put a sweater <laughs> on it. It's so cute. It looks like a barn find. What is this? It's an ancient. 54 Nash Metropolitan. Wow, it's only $4,800? And it runs. 4,800 bucks and it runs. If this was in cherry condition, it'd be 10,000, 12,000 bucks. Right, right. But this is kind of fun, this little thing, this little sewing machine motor in here. <gasps> Mark, how much would this cost to kind of rebuild this again? Oh, <laughs> you wouldn't tell anybody that. You would just do it and you would you do it because you do love it, it right. and you want to take care what of it. What are you saying? You wouldn't tell your wife. Is what you so, yeah, do. you've got the secret credit card for <laughs> right. this. That's what all these, every guy here has a secret credit right. card. It's like, right. okay, we're going to get that $3,000 grill for the Woody. That's what you do. I love it. All right, let's keep going because there's so much stuff here. I mean, unique stuff, like stuff you I would never like, think well, would check be it out. here. Here's a 69, what we know as a Chevelle, but it's a Canadian market Chevelle, so it's a Beaumont Ooh. convertible. It's nice oh. black manual transmission. Sucker looks totally built to me. Right. But it would be <laughs> totally fun. Beautiful It's car. unique, so Beautiful when you go to the car, car show, it's not a Chevelle, it's a Beaumont. Right, right. Gorgeous, I love it. And then look at all these just like. Oh, yeah. 
You so look need... at this. Oh, hood parts, grill parts. Yeah, exactly. You're looking for, oh, I need this. Little wraparounds. I mean, dice. These you are probably. Dice. You need a rusted part of car here. <laughs> you can get anything ooh, here. Ooh, 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 old Chevrolet part of a green one. Wow, yeah. ooh, that's really oh, cool. Actually. Nice. There's some brake pads. Oh, a door handle, 1950. <laughs> hey. Yes. Oh, this is kind of stuff you can just put in your house, in your wall. What kind of art. It art is. Work. It's total Perfect. art. And hey, Mark, if you're looking for some, you know, creepy dolls. Uh, I would not think to come to Good Guys to get an old doll. There you go. See, so guys, you really can't find anything in a car show. <laughs> you can't at Good Guys, anyway. <laughs> uh, look at all this stuff, too. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mustang. Wheel oh, center. Oh, you like? Hubcap Center. Oh, you could do a whole display of these, Amber. Look, you could create these on your little wall. There's a Monza. Like Neat stuff. Frame these in a yeah. in a shadow box. You could use this as glasses. <laughs> Shot glasses. You just couldn't possibly. put it down. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of that cup. You got to drink till yeah. you, drink till you finish. I really don't care where it is. I mean, once a shopper, always a shopper. <laughs> Whether so it's <laughs> shoes, whether it's car parts, whether yeah. it's crap, I guess. I like it. I'm I, a shopper. I mean, the, the end of the, the swap meet area we were in, it was just wild stuff. You'd think, where did they find that stuff? And then gather it all up and bring it. Right. There was a lot of car parts there. Yeah. Older car parts. But there was also some random things. Like, people just, like, saw stuff in the garage and thought, well, I'll just take it all with yeah. me. Dolls. Like those old metal <laughs> signs. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right, stay with us. You're watching Overdrive San Diego. Welcome back. You're watching Overdrive San Diego, driven by Frank Motors. I'm Amber Musker, the race driver, Mark Maynard, and Don Swanson. Key, let me put on some garb. And I'm going to tell you, it's a little hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit hot, and I'm already sweating, boys. But it looks good on you. Thank you. Well, that's what matters. You wear so. it well. Thank Blues you. Blues and all that. Thank you. Perfect. So, Don, you have your uh, performance driving school. Yes. Is this the, the normal gear, or is this your personal gear? Oh. Well, that's my, my personal suit. This is a three-layer Nomex. Um, every layer gives you five seconds in a fire. So if your car's on five fire, that, that gives you 15 seconds to get out. Please. Stop, drop, roll, and buy a suit. Well, hopefully you'll get Man. out of the yeah. right. inferno. Right. Yeah. Wow. So How there, much does a suit like this cost? Th that's about 1200 Wow. That's about $1,200. Wow. But, now, has this suit ever been under fire? Because it's looking pretty no. good. No, no. It's never been <laughs> so under fire. So it's a good luck suit that's is so what far, it is. Yeah. So far, it's a very good yes. suit. Good. So far, very good suit. You know, I think performance driving schools like school teachers are some of the most under-recognized uh, people in our society. Teachers for how they raise, you know, children's thinking abilities mm -hmm. and performance driving schools for how they make the roads safer, starting with young kids. And there isn't enough emphasis on teaching people how to drive. The emphasis is on getting someone's driver's license. Yeah. Rather than, uh, yes, sure. I completely agree with you. When you see the stats of just how many car accidents teaching are to the caused. Test. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How many car accidents are caused by a younger generation? It makes you yeah. believe that this really should be your school. Should You should have to take this before you get a driver's license. It's hard to convince parents, Amber, because they just assume you're teaching them how to have fun in a car. They don't realize you're teaching them life-saving mm -hmm. techniques and tactics oh. and what to look for, how to look for things, how to feel things, uh, how to do an eight-second walk around before you even get in your car. Yeah. Um, everybody should do that. It takes six to eight seconds to look under your car for fluids, walk around to see if all the tires have air in them and to make sure no kids put a toy behind the car before you back out of the garage. Um, that's interesting. Now, when someone w were to take your class, because this is not just meant for younger adults, this is also meant for, you were anybody. saying, anybody, any yep. age range. Um, is this a day-long thing? Is this a week-long thing? It's a day-long this... thing. They show up 7.30 in the morning. By the time we process them, um, go through a, you know, a meet and mm -hmm. greet, um, classes usually start about eight. We okay. do a we do a classroom. Then they take what they learned in the classroom and they go and experience it. Right. So it's a really nice balance between oh, yeah. theory and practice. They go and do what they what they do in the car. We come back to a, a classroom mm -hmm. area. We debrief. 
How was that? Any questions? Now let's go on to this exercise. So we teach them about braking, we teach them about cornering, we teach them about accident avoidance. We put a car in a watered down skid pad where we literally get them completely out of control and teach them how to get out of that problem and get back where they wanted to go. I drove through a girl, I, I was behind her and I saw this little knee, I go zipping down, it had just spritzed rain and I thought that's a perfect situation for oversteer. Yeah. I get down there and this girl looped yep. 360 was facing the wrong way at us and then was waving as I was trying to get around her because she oh. was going to go straight and try to, I just got out of there as fast as yeah. I got away as fast as I could. Oh, way to be of help. <laughs> hey, well, what are you going to do? You know there's traffic coming right behind you. Right. Well, it's if there like, had been a fire. out of the way. If there had been a fire, she should have been wearing this suit. She should have right? been wearing a Listen, I don't know what it is. Wearing this suit <laughs> makes me want to get in that car behind me. Do you mind if we go take a I don't mind a at sneak all. peek into the car behind? Not a problem That's at all. That's a fun car. Let's do it. Let's and do I, it. By the way, I'm keeping these heels on. Perfect. <laughs> Let's go. Oh my gosh, get up, guys. this car this car I've had since uh, I think it was 2004 we had four of these cars actually this is a Honda Civic DX it was uh, it was built by uh, Ty Tipton uh, down in uh, El Cajon he built all four of them for me and um, this, all four? this car's, you've had four I had four there were, I had four cars four exactly like okay. this in his racing school and right. this um, in fact Mark came to our original media day and um, this car is supporting the cause. It's, it's got over eleven thousand dollars worth of parts and accessories. It's got racing seats. I see, yes. Yeah, racing all, harnesses, all racing stuff, yeah. steering wheel. Um, it's got a four-point uh, rollover bar. Um, uh, big brakes in the front. Uh, just all kinds of it's, safety. It's equipment. completely drivable on the street. It's totally drivable. Which, I, yeah. yeah Did you do anything to the motor? The motor's got some basic things done, Mark, but being a school car, we don't want to get it to be a problematic right. thing. You know, so what we did is it's got, a, it's got speed gears, um, uh, it's got a completely tuned exhaust through a, a, a header through a tuned exhaust that uh, Ed Hansen built. Um, it's got a strut tower support across, it's got a cool air intake. Um, so it's putting out maybe 30 horsepower, 35 more than it did originally, which is, which is not bad. I mean, this car will do 71 miles an hour in second gear. So it's, yeah. a, it's a fast car. Well, yeah, the DX is. was the base model, so it didn't have a lot of extra weight adding features. True, so no power windows, power mirrors, no sunroof. So it's a very light car. Um, and uh, what I'm doing now, the reason, you know, uh, we, we're talking racing and Amber's got the suit on, what I've decided to do, rather than sell this last car, I've hooked up with a company called Military Auto Center. They're, um, they have a place up near the uh, Marine Base off of Miramar yeah. Road. And they, about 90% of their business is military, uh, active duty military people. Yeah. So we decided one day we had a meeting and I said, you know what, why don't we take the last race car that I have and perhaps get some sort of a contest where we could take active duty Marines down to the autocrosses at the stadium and let them drive the military auto center car. Very cool. So cool that's idea. what we're working on for Very our troops. Cool. We're trying to figure out the, the fairest way to do that, where how do you choose five people to come down and do that? So we're kind of working on that. Yeah, I was gonna Ooh, say, that's gotta be hard, yeah, choosing who actually gets to do it. Well, you thought what we might do is if they come to Military Auto Center, even if they just show up, they can, they can enter yeah. a, like a raffle, if mm -hmm. you will, or a contest. Um, and then at the end of the month, you know, we, we pick five names out of there. And, yeah. and that seems to be the fairest way. Then it's just, I like it. there's no I like, preconceived. I like the work you do. You're, you're a good guy. All right, I don't care what your mom says about you. All right, stay with us. I'm going to get undressed because I am hot in this suit. You're hot uh, anyway. We, we've got more coming up here on Overdrive San Diego. Can we help? Can Mark can and I give you a hand with that? Oh, yeah, it's pulled. Oh, there oh, well, oh, never mind. Thanks, I'll let Mark Thanks, do that. <laughs> Mark do the unwrapping. Oh, careful, Mark. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> not so fast. Hey, Mark. Mark, not so fast. Mark's my new hero. <laughs> Welcome back, you're watching Overdrive San Diego, and I've had 
a lot of fun with you boys today. Good. That's I always our goal. like to be, you know, just a Don Mark Sando. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had fun with you too. Three yes. o'clock, three across, and an Edsel. How's that? <laughs> uh, so we want to say thank you first and foremost to uh, Frank Motors. Thank you so much. We appreciate everything that you do, and of course, Furniture Warehouse. Oh, Javier, thank you. We love the furniture. <laughs> oh, Javier, very comfortable. Bebe, Javier, we like you, and. Uh, Don, we hope you come by more because we always appreciate it. We have fun, don't we? We want updates on the school. We want this school to happen. Yes. Let me know if I can write a letter to somebody. Yes. Mark. Tell them the value factor. You here. and Amber and I will go strong, you know, with strong arm somebody. Yeah, well, <laughs> rough, yeah. rough them up. I will definitely do that, Mark, because, yep. uh, you know, uh, I got a lot of time that I used up trying to do it in another another yeah. way and it didn't work. It's a work, good idea so. waiting yeah. to happen. Well, yeah. don't give up because it's a great thing and you know, we support you and I know Thank a lot you very of much. other people support you as well. Now, people that want to uh, get a hold of you or take a look at your work, where do they go? They can go to the website. It's www.arriveanddrive.com. Right now, the site is in complete disarray because we had to sort of regroup from from the previous thing right. that did not happen. But they got contacts but, for you. But there's right. contacts yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, good. Well, don't give up. Not going to give up. We're here to support you. We're going to make it happen. And we know it's going to happen. That's right. You guys will be on board. That's right. All right. Thanks for being with us. You will. And those of you at home, thanks so much for watching. We will see you next weekend here at Overdrive San Diego.